That's what it looks like. I'll give you this. You can take Excellent. that with you. Okay. Um, so it's a, a meditative kind of prayer, mm. a very repetitious meditative kind of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the trick is you say a special prayer on each one of the, the beads of the rosary. And they're memorized kind of prayers. So I got the Lord's Prayer is a big one. Mm. Um, the Hail Mary prayer, asking for Mary's prayers mm. for us is a big one. Mm. And and the glory be, which is a little short prayer of praise, is in there. Yeah, so there's five groups of 10 beads. And um, the trick is, you say in our Father, the Lord's yeah. Prayer at the beginning of each group of 10 beads. And then you say 10 Hail Mary prayers, asking yeah. for Mary's intercession. Yeah. And, but if you're saying the Hail Mary prayers, the trick is not to focus on Hail Mary prayers because there's going to be 50 of those. And that's that's kind of boring. Hail Mary prayer, incidentally, real simple. Uh, first part comes from Luke chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. So that's a Gabriel, Gabriel's mm -hmm. annunciation to Mary that she's going to be Mother Jesus. And then, and then Elizabeth commented later in the same chapter, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then stuff is not out of scripture. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So that's a prayer that you're praying 50 times. To do the rosary typically about 15 minutes. About 15 minutes. Great. Yeah. And there's four different main ways of doing the rosary. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of traditional to do different ones on different days just to spread them out. Mm -hmm. So there's the joyful mysteries, which is obviously joyful kind of stuff in the life yeah, of Jesus. Great. Um, sorrowful mysteries, real sad stuff, talking Good Friday kind of stuff. Um, the glorious mysteries, again, real good stuff, happy great. stuff. The luminous mysteries, so mm -hmm. there's some there's what you're describing those. And the trick is, so you do one mystery, there's a mystery, okay. there's a mystery, there's a mystery. Um, and for each set of ten Hail Marys. And the yeah. trick is to not focus on the ten Hail Marys, but focus on the mystery. So the Hail Marys become kind of like a mantra. Mm -hmm. Just kind of keep your mind going. Mm -hmm. But the trick is, so you're focusing on, say, in the Joyful Mysteries, the Annunciation of Jesus is the first mystery. Mm -hmm. So you're really thinking about that while, while you're saying the Ten Hail Marys. Mm -hmm. um, visitation, Nativity, the presentation in the chapel, the of Jesus in the chapel. And so I'm interested in um, engaging in, in a repetitious prayer. I would imagine that your, your mind would start to automatize to the prayer. Mm -hmm. But uh, once you kind of hit that, that level, I would imagine maybe certain insights would kind of come from the background um, of that. Is yeah. that sort of the experiential aspect of? Yeah, that, that's what the mysteries are all about, is that, right. that quiet meditation on the mysteries with, mm -hmm. with, with the mind's kind of going, or the mouth at least is kind of going with the Hail Mary prayers. But, it's more of a mantra, and, mm -hmm. and the brain is supposed to be opening up to those mysteries and life of Jesus yeah. and seeing. Yeah, you know, it's a little vague. Um, so early Christians, I don't know how far back this goes. Yeah. Um, I know the rosary was, was pretty popular by about the 1300s. Okay. So. You know, in, in the form that we use it nowadays, right. pretty much common, you know, 1300, 1400. Um, but somewhere, I'd say probably quite a bit before that, Christians were praying the Psalms. Um, Try to get 250 Psalms every week. Whoa. Now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty serious stuff. And especially when you know that the printing press hasn't been invented yet. Oh, so, absolutely. So some people were trying to memorize them or memorize parts of them wow. and, and do that. Um, you know, there are a few that had the luxury of having scrolls in monasteries or something, maybe, but, mm -hmm. but realistically, most of them could just pull their Bible off their, their bedstand and, and read it out of there. And so what a lot of common people started doing was just praying 150 Our Fathers and, and kind of thinking, well, that kind of substitutes for the Psalms because yeah. because the printing press hasn't been invented yet, it's so I don't have a Bible. It's tangible, easy, or access, can do access. lighter for resources. Access, yeah. 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 Um, and then that kind of evolved into and our Father and Ten Hail Marys, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and, um, and then people had a hard time keeping track of where they were in the 150. So sometimes they use pebbles, like 150 pebbles, and yeah. pedal and pebble every time. And then, yeah. and then kind of the bead, the string of beads. And they can just kind of count on. around every time and something tangible to kind of yeah. for grounding. Yeah, and this is kind of where it ended up with uh, the string of beads. And you, know, you just do a prayer on each bead. And it's like, yeah, that works. And I have to admit, sometimes I leave the rosary at home. Sometimes before a funeral, people want their rosary prayed, yeah. and uh, and I'll be leading it. That's about the only time I really lead it publicly. Okay. But when I'm doing that, sometimes I get off the beat. You know, it's like, yeah, did I move my finger at the last one. Definitely. But anyway, it's it's close. Yeah. Well, personally, in my own spiritual life, I don't use rosary a whole lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, some Catholics love that prayer form. Yeah. Um, for me, I like just real spontaneous open kind of prayer, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. so, okay. so I don't use it a whole lot, realistically. Um, I, I, a lot of people really find it, it works. Um, it draws them closer to Mary, and and Mary's always pointing us to Jesus. Yeah, and so, definitely. So, so some people really like this as a prayer form. It's not my favorite one. I like just a real spontaneous open kind of prayer. So I don't do it a lot. Okay. Um, right. Occasionally, you know, I need to lead it publicly for the parish and um, you know do that but privately it's not it's not devotion that I use a whole lot great great and and so do you find that um, you know within uh, your parish I'm sure there's you notice different personality types do you notice that maybe the rosary is a better fit for certain personality types um, I think that would make perfect sense mm -hmm. I haven't put the correlation there but it, it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. A lot, of, a lot of the older folks were brought up with the rosaries kind of the, a real common way to pray. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's older folks especially mm -hmm. are used to this prayer. I remember my grandparents, um, my grandmother, she had a stroke and in her last two or three years, she couldn't speak sentences at all. And yeah. she might be able to put a few words yeah. together and that was about it. Yeah. Um, but one time I was sitting with her and she and Grandpa prayed rosary every yeah. day, yeah. period, no matter what. Yeah. And so one day I pulled out rosary and started praying a rosary with her, just yeah. knowing that this was something that was a real had been a part of her yeah. life for all yeah. of her life. And and she was going through entire Hail Marys mm -hmm. when she couldn't put more than like three words together in a sentence typically. Wow. And um, it was cool. At first wow. she was, you know, kind of stumbling on them. But, you know, when you say 50 Hail Marys, by the end of that she was going through the whole prayers and it's like, wow, Grandma. Yeah. You're really praying that. You're really talking good today. Yeah. And yeah. it was just so deep in her because she and Grandpa prayed that prayer every day. And, um, and, and the prayer is, is really an intercessory prayer, asking for Mary's prayers. And, and they were big on praying it for their, for their kids and grandkids, yeah. people like me and, and my mom. And, um, so it was a real important prayer for them. Right. Um, that intercessory part of Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners down at the hour of our death at the end of the Hail Mary prayer. So it's, it's a powerful intercessory prayer. Yeah. That's, that's where a lot of Christians use it. Here at the church, there's a group that prays it um, every day before daily mass. We have daily mass at 8.30, but they start at yeah. 10 after 8 and, and pray the rosary together. And then, mm. and then it's usually quiet for about five minutes and then I start mass. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a common devotion Sunday morning before our mass in Spanish. There's a group of probably 50 or 60 people to get together in the church to pray the rosary together. It's not meant to be a necklace, but you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Some people do it. And Excellent. It's okay with me. It's whatever floats your boat. So. And and so that I um, am really interested now. Is there differences in cross cultural like practices with the rosary, or is it pretty much uh, consistent um, cross culturally? You know, it's. Some cultures are bigger into devotion to Mary than other cultures. Hispanic mm -hmm. culture tends to be pretty big in devotion to Mary. Okay. Um, there is apparition. Mary appeared down in Mexico back in the 1500s, mm -hmm. and um, it was really a, a big part of the evangelization in Mexico. Yeah, um, yeah. 800 people, 8 million people were baptized in seven years after her apparition. It just, Christianity really exploded after that. And so, mm -hmm. Mexico and really most of Latin America has a strong devotion to Mary because of that. Um, before that, the, the Spaniards were trying to convert, convert the the Aztecs and lions and things, okay. and uh, 
doing it more by force than by love. Uh, and, and Mary appeared to this guy named Juan Diego, and, and she appeared not as a, as a Spaniard, yeah. but as one of the yeah. Indians. And wow. so with the facial features of, of indigenous people in speaking a message of God's love, and it's like, that, that's what, what to open the door to evangelism. transformation. Well, it was eight million baptisms in seven years, which is, you know, that's pretty good stuff. And, wow. Uh, and before yeah. that, the Spaniards were trying to force Christianity on people, and you don't force Jesus on people. That doesn't work so good, even with good intentions, that doesn't work very good. So there's big devotion in, in Mexico and to, to Central and South America. Um, in the Catholic Church, we, we ask the saints to pray for us. Yeah. And we yeah. believe that not just just people like, like you, Joe, can pray for me. If, you yeah. know, if I'm struggling, I'll, I can ask you to pray for me. But I can also ask people that have died and yeah. we sure up in heaven yeah. to be praying for me. They're the presence of God, and so I ask their intercession. And yeah. so that's what we're doing with Mary and with any saint, St. Francis of Assisi, any saint that we want to do that with. Fantastic. So it's, it's intercession, and and the saints always direct us to God. You know, obviously saints aren't God, but they're Christians, they're, they're believers, they really, they really did it right, um, right as best as they could. And, and in heaven, they point us to God both by their example, yeah, because they were loving Jesus here in this world, and then, and then by their prayers in heaven for all of us. So, so Mary and all the saints, you know, like, what can you imagine yourself being in heaven, yeah. and and someone is trying to communicate with you, and you're not pointing them to, yeah, to God. I mean, that's yeah. it's kind of it's a no-brainer when you're in heaven. It's like, well, that's the only thing that really matters here, yeah. and that's where we get so distracted with everything else. But it's like. In heaven, we're going to know absolutely positively what's what's right and what isn't, and it's like God is right. Period. It's like I'm always going to be pointing you to God. So, so Mary and all the saints Great. point us to God. There, they can be they can be kind of stepping stones to God. They're not required stepping stones. I mean, obviously, talking straight to God is a great thing, but in some ways, the saints and Jesus are being fleshed it too. But the saints kind of been fleshed it in in different backgrounds, different settings. And so sometimes people can relate to a saint, and and so they they may kind of call that their patron saint, and and ask that saint to be praying for them, and kind of modeling their life on that saint. Mm -hmm. Saint Francis to mm -hmm. me has always been a been a model for me. Yeah, and I think that way my life. Okay, mm -hmm. really kind of model my life on him. And I'm not doing it very well, but I'm doing yeah. it. But he, he he always challenges me by his lifestyle. It's that simple life caring for the poor, loving Jesus, full of joy. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. the way I want to be as a son yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. So saints, saints point us to God. Great. Well, Father Don, thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is going to be a, a real blessing for uh, our Christian history theology class. So good. Um, on behalf of our class at George Fox, I just want to say uh, thank you, you got uh, it. so much for your time. We really appreciate yeah. it.